last thing we want to do is chase a gap up in a bear scenario. That's it's the, it's the most basic rule. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader uh nightly wrap up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So same thing, right? Same thing, kind of uh, day by day. Um, you know, you have a lot of weakness. You have a lot of general uh, softness and a lot of names that broke down um, many many weeks ago. Uh, you still have the punishment effect uh, on earnings. They're, they, again, they're not taking down stocks, uh, you know, little by little on earnings. If, if they miss with this sentiment, they're getting destroyed. And the first one that really took the solid missile uh, to his chest was, if you guys remember, was, was Netflix. And there's a lot of companies in between uh, last night and, you know, going into today's session, uh, you know, UPST just got just absolutely manslaughtered. And, you know, when you're taking all these growth stocks, that had these big runs. If you guys remember from yesterday's video, again, you can make a case that these stocks are not cheap, right? They, they just shouldn't have been uh, up in orbit to, to, uh, to begin with. So these earnings reports, all they're doing is just basically justifying that theory. So when you look at a UPST and you still turn around and say, well, $33 is going to base out for the next couple of weeks and finally it's going to go higher. Remember, it's not, right? It's not. All these stocks that we talk about continuously and we, we talk about these earnings lows kind of melting for the next several weeks or so, it's real. Again, you look at every single stock that lost its earnings uh, in the last, you know, in this quarter, so you, you can see it. Uh, Netflix, got down, right? Like I give you a perfect example. Again, we, we kind of go over this all the time. Netflix gone down, rallied sideways, you know, went down another 25 points. Amazon uh, earnings lows, right? Amazon earnings lows, went up a little bit, lost its earnings lows, got crushed. Um, ISRG, right? We just go through them one by one. ISRG lost its earnings, went sideways, got crushed. The Verisign lost its earnings, right? Lost its earnings, lows, got crushed. So you're seeing them over and over again. So a name like UPST, for example, uh, a lot of people are going to turn around and say, wow, look how cheap it is. You had a 50% haircut. Not so fast. Again, if you if you believe in the theory, these growth stocks never believe, never supposed to be up there in, in, in the atmosphere to begin with. And this thing has a lot more to go. I mean, look what look what happened to Peloton, right? Peloton was cheap at 100. Peloton was cheap here. Peloton's cheap there. Apparently, I'm, Peloton's still not cheap, right? And it, things go over and over again. And if you look at uh, today's earnings, uh, you know, the, the continuation of uh, the Kathy Wood kind of unfortunate demise of uh, the ARC funds, little by little, you know, you have another massive, massive haircut on uh, Unity software. I mean... That's going to hurt between uh, between this and TDOC that we've been talking about now uh, for for about a week or so. Finally, lost its earnings low today. Is the lowest close in this whole formation. We've been talking about this kind of nonstop. You know, she's having a very very rough time, and not only is she having a rough time, unfortunately, her investors are having a, a rough time as well. You had Roblox coming in uh, after the close down about seven percent. Uh, Coinbase again, it can't be good. Uh, with with um, uh, with Ethereum and all these uh, coins taking a major haircut, with Bitcoin going down, you know, down another 11, uh, 12 percent after the close, you could see, you could see the sentiment again. The, the day to day almost uh, it doesn't matter. We talked about last night in the video that yeah, we're in a sell bias, but any single day you can get a you know you can get a move up, okay? And 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 who cares? And that, that's the whole point. I don't mean it in a mean way. I don't mean it like. Who cares? Who cares? You, you, you're kind of seeing the same thing play out visually. Even if you don't understand how to read a chart and you're brand new to trading, you could see the whole, you know, you could see the whole thing playing out in real time right in front of your face. The 50 day was lost. The 50 day became from demand. It became supply, got rejected numerous times, went lower, went sideways, went lower, went sideways, went lower. And even when you have up days, again, it's like winning the tallest dwarf competition. The cues were 371 on April the 29th. We're talking about a victory here uh, at 300 uh, only uh, a month later. So this, and look, the bulls obviously need a lot of work to do. And the, the, one, co the one common denominator, and, and here's kind of a little, I have two little tips kind of for all you guys, especially for new, uh, new traders kind of go, going, starting your career. There's a couple of things you don't want to see, right? When, when bottoms are made, first of all, bottoms are made 
over weeks, right? Sometimes over months. They're called roundabout bottoms. And basically what that means is when sellers start to get tired, you start to see contraction channels. That means nobody's has any selling pressure. So on a day, so there's no more days that the NASDAQ is down 600 points. Maybe you'll have some weakness, maybe down 70 points, maybe down 60 points, maybe down 100 points, just the way buyers get tires on the way up, sellers get tired on the way down. And this is kind of a formation that happens for weeks and weeks and weeks. And one thing that doesn't happen uh, in a rounding bottom or bottoming out process, the market never reverses on a gap and go. I, I, I don't think I've seen, in, the, in I'm going on my 24th year, I don't think I've ever seen a gap and go in a bear market, right? You have, usually when you have a, when you have a good, big, strong day, you have, you, you have some sort of catalyst. Like for example, last Wednesday, the market was weak, 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 and you had the Fed come in, right? Fed had that 900 point rally, and then the next day it lost 900 points basically at the open, another 200 points on top of that, right? You, you, don't, you never buy a gap and go in, in, a, in a bull market, in a bear market. And that's exactly what we saw today. We, after yesterday's 4% decline on the NASDAQ, on the Qs, you say to yourself, well, you know, the, the NASDAQ is up about a percent, uh, one, one and a half percent pre-market. Any, any, we talked about this hours ago, man. This was, this is like, you know, this is the first thing I talked about. This is eight hours ago, a big gap up to start the day. The last thing we want to do is chase a gap up in a bear scenario. That's, it's the, it's the most basic rule. There's no rule. Guys, remember when stocks are gapping down, okay, all they're doing is if they gap back up, they're gapping back up into supply. And that's exactly what we saw today. So the NASDAQ was up 250 points today at the open. The NASDAQ went down 50, very, very aggressive. And we'll talk about the individual pivots in a second. And they obviously reversed back a little bit later. And that's kind of what we talked about in last night's video. At some point, they have to have a little bit of a rally. So if this was the rally, right? If this was a rally, this is not really, really great news for the bulls because all they did here was put in an inside day, right? Didn't take out the highs, didn't take out the lows, just put in an inside day on, on strong volume. That's not a good signal. Usually you don't want to put an inside day on strong volume. Volumes, inside days are, are, are meant to be light volume distribution. This is a strong volume, uh, strong volume on an inside day. You know, that can't be uh, really, uh, really good to, uh, you know, to, to, to kind of feel good going into tomorrow's session. But look, eventually, right, eventually, the sellers will get tired, right? It's just, it's it's inevitable. It's like in 2009, right? The generational lows of 2009, you know, the, the question was, well, what the hell, man? This market is going down every single day. It's, it's the mortgage mess. Lehman's zero, Bear Stearns zero, this one's zero. Merrill Lynch has got taken over like a dollar a share by bank. Like what the hell is this going to get this market going up? And that's the whole point. The, the market never needs a reason that's not going to tap you on the shoulder and say, okay, we're done selling. This is the generational low. We're ready to go higher. But you need some sort of signs. You need some contraction on the downward days. You need a roundabout, you know, you need a roundabout bottom with some bad news being negated. You need something positive. You need a, a some, you don't even need a catalyst, but you need something positive in the form of organic price action to kind of get you doing, uh, to kind of get you going. Other than that, you, you know, we're just repeating the same dog and pony show. Uh, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 you know, to be determined. So, you know, going into every single day, you, you're, you're going to be sell biased. Again, like I said in last night's video, the last thing you want to do is get too aggressive at the open because at the open, you're always going to wind up with the wider spreads, with the smallest liquidity, yeah, you're gonna have the biggest candle of the day usually at the open, but the most important part is that you're also gonna open yourself up to the biggest exposure at the open as well. So for newer traders, if you are uh, participating to the downside or to the upside or whatever the case may be, how the day's starting to fold, you might wanna start your day. Again, you might wanna start your day at around 10 o'clock after the first candle. For all of us who've been doing this for a very long time, we know the risk, we know the rewards, we, know, we kinda know what to look for. And today, and kinda going into, like segueing into today's session, you know, today, you know, I. I I saw the 200 point rally and I go, look, I'm not buying anything. There's no way in hell I'm buying anything. There's, there, there's no way in hell after a 4% after a four percent move yesterday into the close, the last thing you want to do is buy anything, any strength uh, into the open and instantly everything got sold. Literally everything got sold pretty much under the sun. A lot, you know, tes uh, Tesla, just to give an example, and that was definitely the shining star of the day. Tesla was up $38 at the open, okay? At one point, uh, at one point, the stock was down 25. So, I mean, it, you, you know, anybody who bought the open today on a lot of names, 
just got absolutely destroyed. And again, was there a hundred different pivots today to the downside? No, because it was a little bit of a choppy day, some long, some shorts. We're, we're giving a little bit of a disconnection of strength and weakness. But the ones, again, we concentrated on, you know, they did fairly well. Uh, so let's talk about them. TDOC, I, I got the wrong price. I actually uh, corrected the price up here. Uh, da, 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 da. Where the hell was it? I connected the price. Oh, here it is. It wasn't 31. Initially, I put 31. If it builds below, can, can flush. It was actually 30. So I apologize. Uh, so $30 on TDOC, not a big move down yet. It went down about $1.50 or so, but the point is this is the lowest close in the whole formation. Again, I gave pre pretty much a lot of examples of what happens when they close below the lowest close in the whole formation. If this thing starts taking out today's channels, you can, you know, this thing could drift uh, into the 21, you know, 21, $20 uh, level. So, you know, nice little move there on TDOC. Spotify uh, stopped right before the 93.50 area. Keep an eye on this 93.50 area going forward, guys. Uh, you know, Apple to the upside, not a big move at all, as you can imagine. You know, went up like 50 cents, 55 cents. Like nothing. There's there's no juice to the upside. And and again, the and I'm sorry, I'm kind of a little bit all over the place. The one thing I forgot to mention, the one clue that you know we're still in a very volatile, exaggerated bear scenario when every rally is on one candle. You know, pay attention to that. If, if you guys notice, there was one big rally attempt today, and it all happened on one candle. Look at some of these stocks, kind of intraday, right? I want to show you guys something. This is, here's my point. Here's the intraday, right? When you see these candles, this happened on one candle. Look at Amazon, right? Right, one candle. Look at Netflix, right? One candle, you can see a little bit bigger. One candle, that's not healthy, right? That's exactly what we saw uh, on the Fed announcement. That's exactly what we saw uh, a couple of weeks ago as well. The market, if it's strong, it's gonna be organic. It's called the grind up, the stare up, right? Slowly but surely, because when you get a grind up for hours and hours and hours, that means there's no selling pressure. When you get one candle, that's called artificial insemination. That's called the robots are taking over. And usually what happens is they get stuffed into supply and in the next couple of days, uh, they start to fade. So I just wanted to kind of include that as well. So CF uh, we're watching, uh, never got down to 90. Again, we talked about uh, TDOC. Facebook, not a big move, but now it's closing at the bottom of the range. Keep an eye on Facebook for tomorrow. Uh, 95.50, if it builds below, can flush. Only went down to like 94 and change. But here it is. The only reason why it stopped is this linear regression line. If it loses, if it starts losing this 94 tomorrow, I think there's a shot it gets to, down to this 192 level. And if it loses 92, look how much airspace we have. So not a big move today on Facebook, but it's definitely, definitely uh, setting up. This was definitely the big one uh, for today. Uh, 794 and uh, yesterday's low, 781. If it builds below, can flush to 750. I still think it gets there. Uh, really, really nice move today on Tesla. I feel like I say that once a day, but... You know, it's just, it really is the greatest stock. So here is the, here is the 94, right? Here is the 94. It closed, it, it stopped at 87, confirmed 87, confirmed 81, and went all the way down to the 774 area. The only reason why it stopped there was this Bollinger Band. I'm telling you, this Bollinger Band gets lost in the next couple of days. And if you believe in technical analysis, you see these two charts, the lows here on these two charts are 750s. Uh, so definitely, definitely watch uh, Tesla. Uh, Rivian, right? This is again where we talk about the power of option flow. Uh, Rivian was trading uh, 2350s and we started seeing weekly 22, 21 puts, 21, 21 puts, 21, 21 puts. Can you, get, can you guess what the low of the day was, right? Da, 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 right? 21 bucks right in the nose. So uh, really, really nice move there on uh, Rivian. Uh, Rivian take on the way down. Yeah, being pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. You don't, you know, you don't care about the scoreboard uh, when you're preparing for the day. You're only caring about sentiment. Let me give you guys a couple of ideas uh, for tomorrow. I, I kind of like, I like Caterpillar. If it loses the bottom of the channel here, that looks pretty good. Uh, look at Comcast, right, guys? You know, again, look at look at Comcast. CMCSA. You know, it's basing, it's basing out. It's not sexy, it's not gonna put in a Tesla move, but watch this thing for the next couple of days. It loses the bottom channel here, it can get hit. And VRTX, let me give you guys one more uh, that's non-beta. Look at look at VRTX, had a massive move yesterday. Uh, again, inside day today, you know, got murdered yesterday up five bucks, which is a tip today. If it confirms in the next couple of days, this thing has a lot of room down, so keep an eye on that as well. So that's it guys, have a great night everybody. God bless, got another game today. Don't even remember if it's my son, my daughter, but I know my wife texts me and say I gotta go. Guys, have a great night, God bless, and I will see you all tomorrow.